this would be the third video, I guess, uh, about what a basis for its apology is. Um, so in the previous video, I introduced this different characterization of how to tell if a particular uh, subset of things from the power set uh, is a, constitutes a basis for its apology. And the way that I've introduced it here, maybe I should just talk through this part first. So if you've got some collection B of things from the power set, say, then that's a basis for this topology. Uh, if and only if the following two things happen. So your whole set X should be able to be written as the union of those things from B. And then again, the more complicated one is that if you had two things from B, and if you had something that lived in the intersection, then you should be able to find something else from B that contains that thing in the intersection and fits entirely inside uh, the intersection as well. So, um, and so be careful again, because if you've got B1 and B2 that are say in a basis, you're not guaranteed their intersection is also in the basis. But we are saying that you can find something that is inside the intersection that isn't the basis. Um, what I wanted to be a little bit more clear about is uh, the angle that maybe you might look through this in is that let's say that you had x but you haven't told anybody about what t is or maybe you don't know what t is yet but let's say that in this case you don't have a t right now but let's say you did have some collection b of a bunch of subsets that say satisfy these two properties here uh, another way we can think about this is that in that case those b's those building blocks those are the building blocks for some topology and what we would say then is that uh, maybe b um, are the building blocks. So we're looking at this from a different context again. Let's say you didn't have a topology on hand, but you had a set B that satisfied this stuff. Then this thing says that B uh, maybe has the building blocks for some topology on X. So you could use this stuff in B in order to make a topology on X. And that's maybe the, the uh, perspective that you want to look at um, this characterization of what a basis is. Maybe you don't know how to describe all the funky things that might be in the topology T, or maybe, maybe you don't know you even have a topology, but again, you have this set. Um, and so what we're going to say then is that in that case, we would say that B, the set that you have, this collection of subsets is really what it is. So B generates. Um, so instead of using building blocks, the word that we're going to use is B generates a topology. A topology T. And so uh, to give you kind of a, a goofy example, you know, if you were, let's say you were uh, on the real line, say, just to keep it kind of college algebra like, on um, the real line, and my favorite, I'll say B. B is the collection of all things that look like A, comma B with parentheses on both sides. So, like, what does that mean? In case you've not seen that before. Um, just to remind you, I'm talking about all the things between A and B, not including A, not including B. Um, we're here, A is say less than B. In this case, um, is a basis for some topology on X. And so like, I haven't told you what the topology is. And so you're like, well, what topology would it be? And so it turns out in this case that it generates, well, in fact, B, fancy B. If I think about what are the things that I could build by taking unions of these, I would just get the usual topology on the real line. B, usual topology on the real line. And so, uh, in other words, like something that's open, you know, is exactly just a union uh, or intersection, say, of these things that I've been calling open intervals for a while now, probably. Um, but then that brings me to uh, the idea of what are some other, what if I just change this a little bit? And so for another example here, so what if I said, again, say X is just the real line, say. So let me back, I didn't draw any picture up here. What am I doing? All right, picture time. This is the real line. And this is this is the real line. And I'm saying that's a, a or maybe you used open circles and you're talking about all the stuff between, you know, whatever. There, there's my picture, did it. All right, what now though? What if I still took the real lines like my set say? But now let me say that uh, what I'm gonna take as a basis for a topology aren't quite A comma B with parentheses on both sides, 
I'm going to call it, uh, I'm gonna take a bracket on the left side now and still keep the parentheses on the right. So I'm saying that the left endpoint's included now and the right endpoint's still now, or again. All these intervals, where again A is less than B. This has got a special name, so this generates a topology. And the topology this generates, it's called the lower limit topology. That's one word for it. There's a much fancier word for it that I think is named after the mathematician uh, who um, maybe came up with this as an example to look at maybe. Um, I don't recall what his name was right now, but I'm sure a good Wikipedia search could find you that pretty quickly. And so this lower limit topology now. So again, what are we doing? Um, we have the real line <laughs> I've got from A to B, and I'm saying it's cool if you want to include that one now, but not this one. And so now what a question we might want to do is, okay, how does this, if these things are the building blocks for open sets, how does that compare to this case where uh, these things were the building blocks for open sets? You know, what does the structure say of like the real line look like if I use these two different sets of building blocks? So how do we compare two different sets of building blocks is what I want to get at. So how do we compare two bases? So comparing, say, bases for topologies. Um, and so to, to do that, we're going to say that uh, two bases are equivalent. So we'll say um, B1, fancy B1 and fancy B2 are equivalent. So I'm going to be lazy. I've said equivalent twice now. Well, now three times. I'm not going to say it again. So they're that um, if the topologies they generate are the same. So what else am I trying to kind of get at? Whenever you see B1 now and you're told it's a basis, like it corresponds to some topology, which maybe I'll call it B1 so it matches. Similarly, if you've got something that you know is a basis, well, it's got a topology that it generates that it corresponds to. So those are kind of two things you want to associate to each other. If you have a basis, you've also got a topology, and vice versa. If you've got a topology, it also should have a basis. Um, what did I want to say now? Oh, how do we compare these two things? And so the main thing that I wanted to know about is um, how do I tell if I've got these two bases, do they give me the same topology or not? And so the main result or a good result or way to check that, so we would say, what's a way to check if B1 and B2 are equivalent? So remember, that means that they generate the same topology, so T1 is T2, uh, if and only if uh, the following happens. So if and only if, um, I'll maybe number these two. So one, for each element of your first basis, B1, so for each B1 and fancy B1, and for each X that lives in there, so for each X in regular B1, you should be able to find so there exists a B2 that came from your other basis, fancy B2, uh, such that, and you might be you might already know what to do, uh, X should be in this one, so such that uh, X lives in B2, but then also B2 should be entirely contained in B1. And the other thing that I should have happen is that you should be able to reverse the roles of B1 and B2 of the basis and have the same thing happen. So I'm just gonna write that down very quickly. So for each uh, each basis element, so for each B2 from fancy B2 and X that's in B2 now, and so each X in B2, uh, what should happen? There should be someone named say B1 from the first basis, so that's a fancy B uh, with you know, X in B1, and now that B1 should be contained in this one as well. And so just to give you a picture, a nice picture, in the previous video we talked in R2 about, uh, you could take um, open, I'll call them open rectangles. Those, are, those would be a fine basis for a topology. Uh, but then you could also take um, versus open balls. That would be a fine basis for a topology too. And so maybe one question is, well, if you use the orange as your building blocks, or if you use the green as your building blocks, 
Do you get different topologies? Uh, and the answer is no. And so the reason for that is if I took the orange as my building blocks, so these, this is like a B1 that's in, I'll call fancy B1 now, my, my rectangles here. And if I took any point that lives inside of here, all right, cool, there's that one. The point is, sure, you could find a circle of small enough radius centered at X that is completely contained inside the orange. And so that is illustrating what one says up here. So my circle is this B2 that comes from my other basis of all those open balls, again, such that, well, X is in that circle and also that circle is completely contained in your orange. And then what else should we be able to do? We should be able to go the other way. And so I'll just draw you a new copy of the plane because that's not that hard to do. If I started in this, in this time with, what if I said that, okay, I've got open balls now in my basis. So I'll call this any random B2 from fancy B2. And if you took somebody named X that uh, lives inside of there now, you should be able to find a square, a rectangle now small enough that completely fits inside of the green ball that contains your point X. And so that is just trying to illustrate uh, what number two up here says. So the fact that you can do that is saying that whether you take these open rectangles or these open balls, they both give you the same topology. Uh, in this case, that comes from just the usual distance function. In other words, that distance function tells me what open is. That's the same thing as if I used the rectangles to say what open is, and it's the same thing as if I use the green balls to kind of tell you what open is. You don't get anything different. And now what's maybe a little bit more interesting is that, you know, even if you just took this different example now, if X is the real line, let's say that B is equal to, you know, the, the usual topology, I'll write it out though, so like open interval from A to B, I'll be lazy and not write anything else. And let's say that B prime now, I'll, I'll use ones and twos actually, so just to make it a little more clear. Let's say one and two is a lower limit topology where we're gonna include the left end point. In this case, these things, I'll tell you now ahead of time, the punchline, they uh, do not generate the same topology. So they are not equivalent. There's another way to say that. And so what you'd be thinking about is you're on the real line. Uh, is it true that, okay, for any A, B like this, is it possible to, and you took any point inside here like this guy say, X, is it possible to find one of these, one of these from B2 from the lower limit topology where the end point on the left is included that completely fits inside of there? And my picture says, yeah, sure it does. So what you need to think about is what if you flip the rolls around? Can you still say that? What if you flip the rolls around of, uh, of starting with one of these orange sets, is it possible to put one of the sets from B1 completely inside of there? That's to say a little bit more about what I mean.